A new report warns that municipalities in western Japan face stronger earthquakes and higher tsunamis than originally estimated. The highest estimated tsunami could reach over 30 meters. A government panel dropped the estimate based on the assumption that an expected magnitude 9.0 level earthquake hit central to western Japan. The revised projection is based on a report released in December on earthquakes along the Nankai Trough. Major earthquakes have occurred along the Pacific Ocean trough between every 90 to 150 years. 687 municipalities in 24 prefectures could experience earthquakes with an intensity of 6 minus or stronger on the Japanese seismic scale of 0 to 7. The figure is nearly double the government projection of nine years ago. As for tsunami, the panel says 90 municipalities in 11 coastal prefectures in the belt from central to western Japan could be hit by tsunami higher than 10 meters. Among them, 23 municipalities could be struck by waves higher than 20 meters. It says although Tateyama City near Tokyo is far from the focus of the assumed quake, it cannot rule out a 9-meter tsunami. Tsunami could measure more than 25 meters in height in Shimoda, nearly 25 meters in Toba, and over 34 meters in the town of Kuroshio. Higher than expected jolts have also been forecast for areas hosting nuclear power plants. For this area around the Hamaoka nuclear power plant, tsunami waves could reach as high as 21 meters. That is higher than the 18 meter high tide barrier being built at the Hamaoka nuclear plant. 18 meters is not high enough for possible tsunami. I believe the utility should reconsider its anti tsunami measures. Kawakatsu says the assumption will influence the decision whether to resume the plant's operation. The panel will compile the report by June. The government will study comprehensive prevention measures based on this report. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda says he will place top priority on safety in deciding whether to restart two idled nuclear reactors in western Japan. The two reactors at the OE nuclear power installation in Fukui Prefecture are currently offline for scheduled safety inspection. Most of the nuclear reactors in Japan have been suspended for safety checks since last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. This has raised concern over possible power shortages. Noda told an upper house committee that meeting the country's power needs should not come before safety. <laughs> He said the opinion of local residents will be taken into account before the decision is made on restarting the reactors. Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda has instructed a minister to draw up new standards for nuclear safety. The standards are a precondition for restarting two reactors at a nuclear plant on the Japan Sea coast. The Nuclear Safety Commission is conducting stress tests on Japan's nuclear power plants. Last month, it favorably assessed the first round of stress tests on the reactors at the OE nuclear plant in Fukui Prefecture. Noda and three ministers discussed the commission's assessment. The ministers were briefed by the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency on the findings of its investigation into the nuclear crisis at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Some of the ministers said the proposed safety standards are not clearly defined. Noda instructed Industry Minister Yukio Edano to come up with new standards for nuclear safety. Even if we can confirm the safety of the plant, it will take some time to obtain residents' approval for restarting it. Noda and the three ministers are to meet again later this week to discuss the necessary safety measures. The government is basing these new standards on guidelines drawn up by the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. NISA officials outlined 30 steps following last year's accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The measures are designed to address factors that caused the meltdowns and massive radioactive leaks at the nuclear plant. Some of the steps call for operators to secure multiple emergency power sources, protect facilities from tsunami, and install electrical equipment in different locations. Other measures include storing long-lasting emergency batteries on site and setting up headquarters that are quake-resistant and shielded from radiation. 
Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda is in intense discussions with three of his cabinet ministers about restarting two nuclear reactors in Japan. Currently, only one of the country's 54 reactors is running. Noda and his ministers are going over a draft of new stricter safety standards for nuclear plants. Meeting these standards would be a precondition for restarting reactors. We'll be briefed by the industry minister regarding a draft of new, stricter safety standards. Then we'll have thorough discussions. This is the second meeting Noda and the three ministers have had on this issue. Industry Minister Yukio Edano is believed to be briefing the group on the draft standards. The rules include steps to secure power sources in emergencies and make nuclear plants tsunami-proof. The Prime Minister told Enano to draft the standards ahead of the decision to restart two of the reactors at the Oe nuclear plant in Fukushima Prefecture. He and the ministers will meet again Friday. Chief Cabinet Secretary Osamu Fujimura says the new safety standards would also be applied to decide whether other reactors should resume operations. The planned standards would not be temporary, but new criteria. They would be a major index in deciding whether to restart a reactor. We might consider making them legislation eventually. The operator of two nuclear reactors in central Japan has submitted a safety action plan to the industry minister. This is a precondition set by the government for restarting the two reactors at the company's OE plant. The president of Kansai Electric Park Company, Makoto Yagi, handed the plan to industry minister Yukio Edano. I believe it's important for operators to raise safety benchmarks yourselves. We'll carry out the plan so we can further improve safety. The timeline includes the installation in 2015 of vents equipped with filters to scrub radioactive materials from steam. The vents are used to release pressure from containment vessels in the event of a nuclear emergency. The company also plans to build an earthquake-resistant office building the same year. The utility says the office will serve as a response center for dealing with nuclear accidents. Experts with Japan's Environment Ministry are trying to figure out how to satisfy the country's appetite for energy. They say a significant reduction in greenhouse gas emissions can be achieved through the increased use of renewable sources. The government's midterm target calls for emission cuts of 25% by 2020. Government leaders said after the accident at Fukushima last year that they wanted to reduce reliance on nuclear energy. They said they wanted to mitigate climate change at the same time. They asked their panel of experts to come up with new measures and review the midterm target. The panel estimated how much 1990 levels of greenhouse gas emissions could be cut by 2030. The experts say that even without relying on nuclear energy, a 25% cut in emissions is possible by significantly increasing sources of renewable energy and employing measures to conserve energy. Japanese government ministers say reactors at a nuclear power plant in the west of the country need to be restarted. They say that's the only way to avert a power shortage in the region this summer. The reactors at the Oi nuclear plant are offline for regular safety checks. Ministers said a safety action plan from the plant operator meets new government standards. They also considered the likely power shortfall if the plant stays offline. The government is responsible for ensuring a stable power supply. 
We decided that the reactors at the OE plant need to be restarted. The ministers said they'll discuss the issue again after getting consent from communities near the plant. Ministry Minister Yukio Edano has met with the governor of Fukui Prefecture to convey the central government's decision on restarting two reactors at the Oi nuclear power plant. The reactors are currently offline for safety checks following the Fukushima accident. In a meeting with Fukui Governor Issei Nishikawa on Saturday, Edano said the government, after confirming the two reactors' safety, has decided that they need to be restarted. Edano stressed the importance of nuclear power as a core energy source for the Japanese economy and its society. I hope the governor and the local communities will understand that the reactors need to be put back online. <laughs> Governor Nishikawa said the local people will not support a resumption until energy consumers outside the prefecture understand the contribution the local people are making to the nation's energy policy. Nishikawa also said his prefecture intends to have its own panel of experts check the safety of the reactors. China's industry minister Yukio Edano says there will be no nuclear reactors operating in the country after the last remaining active reactor is shut down for regular inspection early next month. There's going to be none of the reactors running for a short while, I mean zero, from May 6. Edano made the remark on Sunday. He admitted that it will be difficult to resume the operation of any idled reactors before then. Currently, only one out of 54 reactors in Japan is in service. It's located at the Tomari nuclear plant in Hokkaido and will go offline on May 5th for routine inspections. Earlier this month, the government decided that the reactors at Oi nuclear power plant in Fukui prefecture are safe to operate and need to be restarted. The operation was halted following last year's Fukushima accident. A day earlier, Edano met with Fukui Governor Issei Nishikawa. The governor said local people will not support the resumption. The industry ministry will analyze what could occur without nuclear power generation. The study will make it clear that the absence of nuclear power will create problems in various sectors, at least for the coming summer months. Output at Japan's nuclear power plants hit a record low during the country's last business year. Use of nuclear power plunged after the Fukushima nuclear disaster. The Federation of Electric Power Companies of Japan says that the average operating rate at nuclear reactors nationwide stood at 23.7 percent in the fiscal year that ended in March. That's a drop of more than 40 points from the previous year. It was the lowest rate since commercial nuclear power generation debuted in Japan in 1966. Before the Fukushima disaster, about 37 of Japan's 54 reactors were operating. Many have since gone offline for regular inspections, and there's no concrete plan to restart them. Japan currently has only one operating reactor on the northern island of Hokkaido. Meanwhile, Japan's 10 regional power companies report a record drop in the amount of power they generated or purchased last fiscal year. The amount fell by 5% to slightly over 930 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. The decline was partly due to nationwide efforts to save energy in the wake of the nuclear disaster.
Two governors in Western Japan are calling on the central government to provide further proof that it should allow the restart of some reactors at a nuclear power plant nearby. The central government wants two reactors at the Oi plant in Fukui Prefecture to go back online soon. Kyoto and Shiga Prefectures neighbor Fukui. Their governors have proposed that the central government seek independent advice from nuclear experts before making a final decision to restart the reactors. The governors say a third-party panel should verify the region's power supply and demand estimates for the summer. They also want the government to show why the reactors must be restarted before an official inquiry into the Fukushima disaster is complete. We want the central government to clarify its views and the steps it's taking. We'll see how they respond, and then we'll make our decisions. The central government has said the oil reactors meet its new safety standards. Officials say they should be reactivated to avoid power shortage this summer. Japan's nuclear network is running on empty. The only reactor still in operation goes offline for maintenance and safety checks in about two weeks. Government leaders have promised to seek local approval before units are restarted because of what happened at Fukushima Daiichi. Two reactors in the town of Oi in Fukui Prefecture could be the first to restart. A new NHK survey suggests more than half of the people living in Oi support the plan to fire up the units again, but only a third of citizens in neighboring areas are in favor. NHK conducted the telephone poll last weekend. It surveyed residents in Oi and four neighboring municipalities. The results showed 54% of people in Oi support the plan to restart the reactors. 37% are against it. Only 32% in the neighboring municipalities back the plan. 60% oppose it. The survey also asked whether people are concerned that restarted reactors could be damaged and release radiation into the environment. 71% of people in Oi said yes. So did 84% of their neighbors. The poll also asked whether the government has done a good job of explaining about the safety of restarting the reactors. 29% of people in Oi said it had, as did 19% of their neighbors. I'm concerned about the livelihoods of many neighbors who work at the OE plant, but safety should be fully confirmed before the reactors are restarted. The host town enjoys various benefits from the nuclear plant, but neighboring municipalities do not, so their opinions must be heard. There's no set date for when the two reactors at the Oi plant will go back online. The utility that operates the facility says people in western Japan will face an energy shortfall this summer if the units aren't restarted. It's shaping up to be a tough summer for Japanese businesses. Many are preparing for possible power cuts as the country's only operational nuclear reactor is set to go offline for a checkup next month. Leading electrical wire maker Sumitomo Electric Industries plans to install in-house power generators at four factories in western Japan by June. The company wants to maintain certain levels of output, even if its electricity supply is reduced. Housing maker Daiwa House Industries says it will introduce 1,000 lithium-ion batteries at its plants and offices across the nation. That's to store electricity late at night for use during the day. Leading drug maker Takeda Pharmaceutical will keep running its factory in western Japan through upcoming holidays early next month. The plan is to secure sufficient stock of its products. Meanwhile, many firms say it's difficult to devise concrete measures amid the unclear outlook for electricity demand this summer. Increasing numbers of businesses are calling on the government to provide forecasts as soon as possible. Japan's Nuclear Safety Agency wants the operators of four nuclear power plants to reassess the quake resistance of their facilities. The agency says the risk of a major tremor has increased since the March 2011 earthquake in northern Japan. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency wants a reassessment of the Tomari plant in Hokkaido, Tsuruga and Monju plants in Fukui Prefecture and the Shimane plant in Shimane Prefecture. Agency experts say there is now a greater risk of faults more than five kilometers apart, shifting simultaneously. They say this would cause an earthquake stronger than current quake-proofing standards. Hokkaido Electric Power Company says such a scenario would have little effect on the Tomari facility. It says key buildings at the plant would be little affected. 
But agency experts say the tremor will be stronger if the two faults shift simultaneously. The utilities have agreed to re-examine the plans. The results could force a revision of quick resistance standards. They also likely to affect how soon the idled plants can restart. A nuclear plant on the Sea of Japan coast in Fukui Prefecture will undergo fresh inspections after experts warned it may be located above active faults. The plant is now offline for regular safety checks. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency issued the inspection order to operate a Japan Atomic Power Company. A team of experts surveyed three faults under the plant compound. One of the faults, located 150 meters west of the number two reactor, may be active. The team said the fault could shift simultaneously with a known active fault nearby. If that happens, they could trigger an earthquake more powerful than the plant's allowable level. The agency ordered the plant operator to check if the fault running directly below the reactor is active. The government's quake resistance guidelines for nuclear plants do not consider the possibility of active faults. The agency has been examining seismic faults near nuclear plants across Japan following the nuclear accident in Fukushima. Japan's Nuclear and Industry Safety Agency, or NISA, says it will draw up new safety standards regarding the impact of tsunami on nuclear power plants. In addition to the height of tsunami, the standards will also address the penetration and pressure exerted by the powerful waves. Last year's giant tsunami flooded emergency generators at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, a situation that led to multiple meltdowns. Experts say assumptions regarding the potential force and reach of the tsunami were inadequate. The waves that hit the plant were 13 meters high, about 7 meters above projected levels. They inundated all major facilities. A turbine building closest to the shore was flooded to a height of 5.5 meters above the floor. The pressure of the tsunami forced the entrance door and water gushed in through air vents and hatches. The emergency generators and power panel located in the basement were flooded. NISA announced it will use a new yardstick for the design of nuclear power plants. New criteria will include the pressure exerted by a tsunami in the areas it's likely to reach. Experts discuss the use of these criteria to check the resilience of safety equipment. They will also examine how frequently large-scale tsunami occur. People living near the Oe power plant in central Japan are wrestling with whether to sign off on a plan to fire up two of the facility's four nuclear reactors. They're balancing concerns about safety, the economy, and the energy supply. Some of them brought those concerns and questions to a public meeting. The Oe reactors are the first units approved for restart in the year since an earthquake and tsunami triggered an accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Some 550 people attended the meeting Thursday. The gathering was open to local residents only. Activists opposed to the resumption of the reactors held a rally outside the venue. A central government official explained that experts have confirmed technology is in place to keep the OE reactors cool, even in the event of a disaster like the one that hit Fukushima Daiichi. Residents also gave their views. Uh, I think Japan will not recover without the resumption of the OE plant. If the government will seriously think about protecting people's lives, I'm in favor of turning the reactors back on. Some participants expressed concerns there is no quake-resistant office building at the OE plant that would serve as a crisis center should an accident happen. The unimaginable could happen. A quake-resistant building is necessary in case the worst takes place. When it comes to restarting the reactors, the economy and safety should definitely be considered separately. Other residents question whether restarting the reactors is even necessary. Is the electricity demand in the Kansai region as high as the government forecasts? 
A recent NHK poll suggests 54% of OE residents are in favor or slightly in favor of restarting the reactors for economic reasons. But 71% of people surveyed voiced concerns about the risk of an accident if the units go back online. The mayor of OI says the town council will decide whether to approve restarting the reactors after hearing what residents have to say.